Good morning, beautiful fish lovers, and welcome to another episode of Puff Daddy Reef. Today, we are going down into the sump. Alright everybody, so here is the sump and I didn't clean it up too much because I wanted you to just see basically how it looks on a day-to-day -day basis and how I'm thinking about changing it and configuring it. So the sump basically has a few areas here. We're going to go around uh, with the flow of the water. So we're going to start right here where the water flows into the tank. Now this area was where the water flows in but it was also the spot where I had a, some catomorpha growing. Uh, unfortunately, I have this, so this is the Kessel, maybe it's like H360, one of their horticulture lights, and it is great for growing algae and stuff, but what happened is I put some Kato Morpha in here, and it just fried it. This light is really powerful, and one thing about this light is it really only has two settings, and they're not power settings, they're color settings. Uh, so there's basically like a grow and a bloom. Uh, for people that are growing and blooming uh, things that are not Ketomorpha algae. So inside here, basically the Ketomorpha kind of died and then all this other sort of yucky algae started growing there. So I guess we're still uh, growing algae there, but it's harder to export it when it's not in a algae form. And it's, you don't just want algae to grow in your tank. What you do is you want it to grow and you want to remove it. Removing it is how you export the nutrients. And the whole point is to export the nutrients. Like for example, if you have an algae scrubber, you need to take the algae out of the scrubber periodically. Having it in there and not doing anything doesn't do your tank anything after very long. So what else is in here? Well, I also have a heater and then I have some rocks, but that whole situation on the heater is being less effective because now there's a bunch of junk growing over it. So for this part, I really don't know what I'm going to do. I think that the experiment as this being the right place to grow Kato in this aquarium is not working. So what I'm considering now is moving this light over here and also moving it a lot higher. One of the problems with moving the light higher though is there's more light bleed. And I don't want this light to bleed over onto my corals or other things. So I'm gonna have to set up some sort of shield for it. Uh, the light bleed, it's, it looks kinda actually cool at night, um, but I just really want to have a separate area um, where I'm growing algae. And that's why I feel like an algae reactor, not an algae reactor, but an algae scrubber would be a much better solution. But that's not gonna be an option for me because I already spent a lot of money on this light and I wanna use it. You could say it's a sunk cost, maybe I could sell it off, but I think I still can set up something over in this back area here. So let's talk about the filter socks in this aquarium. So the next step here, I'm gonna try to move this so you can see it and they definitely need to be changed. Well. Wow. We'll just kind of peek in there. Those are the filter socks, and I change those about every week. Um, I should probably change them every four days. That might be a little bit better. You can see the front ones. It's a little difficult to see here, but the front ones are completely filled up now. I had those in uh, last week, and the back ones are still filtering. So they do work. These are the, um, the finer versions of the socks and you do have to buy a lot of them and change them out however if you got a laundry machine you wash them out it's not too bad and the problem with the filter rolls that i was looking at is with the design of this tank where you have this water thing that you need to slide forward and back this reservoir you're either going to have your reservoir over this area and make it really hard to work with or it's over here if it's over here there's really no good place for a a filter roll roller fleece thing if somebody has seen that uh, how they've implemented kind of a roller fleece filter type thing in this tank please leave a link below in the comments I would really like to see that uh, to see how that could be implemented but for now I think filter socks are making the best use of the space that's available and it's really not too much work to fill uh, to change those out now let's go to the really exciting spot this is right here is my little grow lab where I am growing all sorts of corals. 
and I am really having fun back here. I think I'm growing quite a lot of things. I do need to add some separation for this pectina. This pectina is doing great, but he is uh, stinging nearby neighbors, so I need to move him up. And I basically have all these really, really cool polyps. Um, these are different types of zoas mostly, a few pallies, and they're growing really well down here. How I set this up, I basically uh, took everything out of there, all the sand, everything. I didn't really have sand, but I had a bunch of detritus and stuff. And I put a layer of these marine pure balls just completely flat along the bottom. And the idea with that is to just even though I'm converting this into a frag factory, I wanted to make sure that I had still enough uh, biological filtration. So bottom layer of rocks. And then what I did is I put this egg crate here. And this egg crate basically um, is supported on this end by just sticking out a little bit over this little glass divider. And that holds it up on this end. And then on the other end, and it's about two inches from the bottom, I added these little pieces of PVC that prop it up on that end. So it's a full length uh, frag rack, which is really cool. Allows me to put a lot of frags in there. And I've been thinking about also putting higher level frag racks up here. Uh, the problem with that is it does block some of the light. So I need to have more uh, basically light from more directions to kind of reduce shadowing. But I think for some of these coral, the shadowing is not going to be too much of a problem. Now, if we look at the lights that I have, I basically have just been salvaging the lights from the Nouveau Fusion Aquarium. And so basically I have these two Kessel A80s and this Kessel A, uh, A160. Now, the problem with having them up here is they're very uh, wide beam type of lights. And so the light does spread out a lot, which is great. It allows me to see in my tank and work, but it means a lot of the light is not actually hitting the corals. So right now we're only getting about 20 to 25 par because the lights are so high up with respect to the corals. Now that is completely enough light for the Zoas. They do fine with that and everyone else seems to be doing okay, but SPS probably not gonna happen well on this. So what I'm really thinking about is getting one of those Kessel A360Xs and putting on the beam narrowing uh, feature to make sure I preserve as much of the light when you go down. I don't know why there's this trend for everyone want to want super, super duper like widespread on the lights. It doesn't necessarily help shadowing unless all that light is falling into the tank. Any light that is not falling into the spot where you want it is basically wasted par. And if it's wasted par, it's wasted electricity. You're costing yourself money for lighting things that you don't need lit, like this wall or that. There's actually literally money in the form of electricity that is just splatting against this wall and vaporizing. So I really am looking forward to maybe some narrow beam lights that I can focus in here, um, perhaps even from different angles and shoot the beams in there. Also, if I had narrower lights, I could probably hold my lights on top of my tank a lot higher, which would be an even cooler effect. Uh, but once again, it's kind of a trade-off between uh, coverage and overlap of the coverage, really, um, and actually getting the light exactly where you want. So in this part here, this is my little filtration area and my oval skimmer, I actually swapped out and I swapped back to this previous skim skimmer. This is the SN143. I took out the oval skimmer because it has a intake on the bottom of the skimmer actually facing down. And what happens is that intake faces down and it sucks up grit and dirt into the pump and was causing the pump to malfunction all the time. This skimmer has a uh, basically an intake that's on the side. It doesn't get rocks and gravel and grit very much. And so it seems to work a lot better. Now this skimmer is a little bit undersized for this tank, but I do have a skimmate locker. See, that's that tube there. And that tube basically goes all the way to this part of the tank where I hold tons and tons of skimmate. And that basically gives me a little bit more time between having to clean out or change the skimmer. Because it's smaller, it holds the, the head on the foam really well. But I do think I am going to upgrade this. Probably I'm going to get the Red Sea Reefer Series skimmers just because they have some cool features. They're made for these tanks and no one has really seen them or reviewed them yet. So if you want to learn about that skimmer, stay tuned to my channel. Please subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you'll know when that skimmer gets in and I do a review on it. I also do run carbon. 
I've been running it semi-continuously now, but I think I'm going to turn it off and just run it uh, via the Apex and turn it on maybe an hour a day just to give a nice good scrub of the water. Maybe I'll do it every other day. I'm not sure how I'm gonna implement that. I think doing it once a day for a short period of time is probably gonna be easier. So let's talk about the auto top off and the water reservoir. So this is the water reservoir that comes with the tank. And what is really cool with the dimensions of this tank is if I really wanted and I actually tried and did it for a period of time, you can put a 10 gallon, a standard 10 gallon aquarium inside here to replace this auto top off. So that gives you, this is about eight gallons, 10 gallon aquarium is about 10 gallons. So it gives you two more gallons if you want to do that. The problem with the 10 gallon aquarium, so it's a little tiny bit narrower than this, but a lot taller. And when I had that configured, I really couldn't take my pitcher, turn it over and dump the water in. I would much rather have something that's wider rather than taller. So it's kind of up to you if you want to do that. Perhaps if you had the 10 gallon in, you, you could put a tube and just funnel the water in and you would get some more time. But I think that extra two gallons isn't worth the extra complication. Now, if you see in here, I have a Tunzi ATO and I'm not using the auto top off system that came with the tank. That's because I actually broke my auto top off system. So the one that drains out of here, uh, originally I had some problems where I got some material stuck in it and it kind of clogged it up. So right now I'm just kind of plugging it with this tube. But the tube that goes back to, let's see if I can get to it. There's a float switch back there, see it? And so this float switch um, basically broke off the connection on the top. And so I haven't bothered to fix that. I've been using the Tunzi ATO because I just like it a lot. It's a super reliable system. And the interesting thing here is I have it shooting water out of here, which does make it a little loud. I can't put this below the water level or to actually create a siphon. So that's a big downside about using a Tunzi ATO in here. You actually have to trickle the water from above or figure out some other way to break the siphon. But what I'm thinking about doing is adding some sort of like rainmaker thing here, um, putting the water in there so every time it tops off, it basically rains down on these leaves and gives them a nice rinse, just like in the wild. So while we're talking about my mangroves, let's talk about my mangroves. So I started with, I think about five, I think four made it through shipping really well. Of those, two of them died mostly because they were falling over and different things. And then I had two that ended up doing pretty well. This one is doing great. It's grown a lot. It's really tall. It's got a nice root structure and it has a total of eight leaves on it. This one only has about four leaves because I just lost a few while I was rearranging this thing. They kind of broke off, but I think he will recover. Overall, I've liked the mangroves a lot. I think they're cool. It's a nice addition uh, visually to the tank. I'm trying to figure out how to get them more light because I used to have this light up here directly over my mangroves. And now this light is kind of trying to help out the frag factory. So I got this guy angled up by it. Maybe that's why he's doing a little better. Maybe I should put this guy there, but I'm just kind of nervous about putting this thing in here. It's right above those mangroves because it's so powerful. So other than that, this is pretty much the basis of the sump. Another thing I did is I added this little shelf and um, this is like a 3M command adhesive shelf thing you can buy at like Home Depot. And I found it's nice. I have a, you know, a little bulb sucker there that I use to spot feed corals. I keep the food cup there. I keep some forceps, which I use to feed my shark when I want to get it right up into his face, something that he doesn't like, uh, or foods that he doesn't like that maybe I want to get him to eat, like things with vitamins and stuff. Um, scallops, shark doesn't need in front of his face. He will find a scallop within 30 seconds wherever it is in the tank. Now over here, let's talk about the rest of the plumbing. Um, so way down there, if you look, I have my pump and it's an old Eheim compact and the water level is actually low there because I just filled up the water top off reservoir. But the Eheim compact is doing okay, but I think it is a source of some amount of electricity leak. So I am going to replace it. What am I going to replace it with? Well, I have this Neptune system core 15 pump. And that is going to be what's going to drive this tank. I think the cool thing about adding this tank is when I start a feed mode, it can lower the speed of the pump just so it maintains the pressure so water doesn't siphon back into the tank. But it also will basically stop the flow completely. So I think that's what I'm going to do. 
Actually, I know that's what I'm going to do. If you want to see the review on this, subscribe to my channel, like, just do it right now. Just hit that subscribe button and the bell, and you will get alerted when I do the full review on this and let you know my impressions of it. So that's it for this part of the sump, but I do want to show you what's going on in the other side of things underneath, and it's not looking good. So right now, basically, it's a mess because I'm swapping out the pump. I have the new ATO and I have my dosing pump back there, skim eight locker here, and I've been storing dirty old filter socks down here. Now I removed that little tiny quarantine tank that was adding a lot of moisture to this area, something that I'm not sure that I really wanted. And so that's gone, which makes me have a little more room, but this, this just looks like a mess. So yeah, it was a good idea at first, but I just keep changing things up and I keep uh, not, not really spending the time to organize it. So if we ever have completely wireless aquariums with wireless everything and just beam power everywhere, that would be pretty awesome. I think I would buy any product like that immediately. And we'll do one quick look at the tank. Maybe we'll do a view down the tank. That would be kind of cool. So here's the tank. It's doing pretty well, as you've seen some of the videos in the introduction. Uh, but I definitely do need coral. That's what I'm going to be looking for next. As far as fish go, I'm really happy with the fish I have in here. If you have any suggestions of fish that my shark won't eventually grow up to eat, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm looking for, you know, medium to large size fish that aren't too aggressive. Uh, I like these large flame angels, and but that's pretty much the only flame angel you can have in a tank. So I'm kind of stuck on that. But fish like that that I think are probably a little too big for him to eat would be a good idea. That clownfish, as soon as he starts getting a little bit bigger, I'm going to have to move him to the sump because he will probably be the first to go. So that's kind of it with the tank. And you let me know if you have any questions or comments on this aquarium. But really let me know about the sump because this is the sump tour video. You've just been filled in on its status. Let me know any comments or suggestions on it. And I'll catch you next time on Puff Daddy Reef.